Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. If any of you have ever looked down at your hands and said, you know, eight fingers and two thumbs, that's way too many. I would recommend noodling in the South for catfish or whatever else, because more than likely it won't be very long before a creature like this will fix that problem for you. Now, this is, of course, an alligator snapping turtle. There are basically two versions of snapping turtle in North America. The difference is the one on the left, the alligator snapping turtle, has a much larger gape that you can see here. However, the common snapping turtle, the one on the right, has a reputation for being much more aggressive and has this telescoping neck that this one doesn't. And a lot more people have lost digits to the common snapping turtle than they ever have to the alligator snapper. Now, the reason I'm talking about that today is that I've found something in Antarctica. And it is some type of a hybrid that I have spent three days trying to find some record of this creature. And I've gotten close, but maybe someone out there who knows more about this can help. There was, this is my first candidate for what I think I have found. It has the head and beak of what looks like a turtle. It doesn't have a classic mouth of a dinosaur full of teeth. This is Dunkleosius. And there are many um, archaeological finds, fossils, of this particular creature. Body of a shark and head of a turtle, basically. And this gives you an idea of how big this guy was. Now, the rest of the creature looks a little bit more like this. This is a dimetrodon. And while not as big as a lot of dinosaurs, big enough to be a problem. This is kind of the family that they ranged from, you know, big enough to probably end your life to the size of a really big rat. There's also this guy, Antiosaurus. 
and once again this the size is about right but once again this guy had a head full of teeth and what I found looks like it has a beak this guy is too small and this is kind of the the picture that I found that shows basically the head shape so we're gonna talk about Houston later on um, just a concept that I was talking about where we can lose information through history. If you were to, if some future civilization were to, um, somehow find the old recordings of the exploration of space, <clears throat> they might think the planet was named Houston, or they might think the capital city of the planet was named Houston, or maybe the capital of North America was named Houston. When no, none of that is right because we remember the recordings of them talking to Houston. So, anyway, without any further delay, where we're going to be today in Antarctica is up here around the 10 to 11 o'clock region. And in that area, we have been before and found a lot of other things. I'm going to go ahead and zoom right to this find to show you this. Now it kind of ties in with something else that I have been finding. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the videos where we've shown what looks like fire. Now this is the fossil I'm talking about here. As you can see we have the upper jaw and the eye, the nose, the beak right here, the lower jaw here to the left. It may or may not have teeth, I'm not exactly sure, but once again here's the uh, pectoral fin. Here's what looks like the dorsal fin. And then the rest of the body seems a lot more fish-like. And of course, I will give you these coordinates. You can look for yourself um, and make up your own mind. But not very far off to the right, we see what looks like some type of a human figure with some kind of equipment. And that's something that, and there's also another picture I'm going to show you, that kind of makes me believe they're using fire down here. Now, not very far from this, we also see what looks like some type of a plesiosaur type of creature here. This is what I believe to be the head, because you can see the rest of the body and the front flipper here. And this might be the tail. This region has a lot of activity and a lot of these fossils that you can see coming up through the ice. This is an iceberg we're looking at. This is one of the more uh, disturbing images that I found and not even really sure how to label it because we can see a horn, eye, some kind of a jaw here. But up here is where I think I found the evidence of how they are creating the fire. Whatever civilization this is, whatever government this is, this is going to be a tough one to show, and I'm going to zoom in to the best I can. Here's another one of those skeletons, fossils, that they're pulling out of the ice. Now, if you look very closely, this is the excavation. Down here to the right, you see what looks like a human figure, and he's holding something that has almost kind of a long pole-like figure to it. But if you zoom in real close, just above it, you see what looks like a flame. Now I know I'm going to catch a lot of heat for this because it's blurry, but when you look at this on a large screen, I'm going to see if I can turn maybe the light down a little bit to accentuate this. It really does look like some humanoid figure holding a flamethrower. And what they're doing is they are melting the ice when they find whatever evidence may be peeking through the surface to get down to what's underneath. Because we have a figure here, we have what looks like perhaps a seated figure here, and then up above I'm not exactly sure what's going on here with this, but it's definitely not natural, whatever it is.
And this would explain a lot because we see this over and over again in these regions that we see snow and ice, but also what looks like scorched images, images of some type of scorching. Here we have some other kind of creature that's come through one of these cracks in this iceberg. And a long time ago, in a completely other region, we're going to fly over there real, real quick, I found something a lot like it. And I didn't cover it because it was a one-off. It was one thing, it's like, well, it's by itself, but now I have a correlation. Do you see the shape of the head here? The beak, the neck, and you have the, the front flipper. Now the rest of this is encased in ice. But that head is pretty unmistakable here. And that's about as good as I can get it as far as resolution. But pretty clear that this is some kind of an ancient beaked animal. That's Then this would be something that a lot of governments would love to find. To go down to Antarctica, take advantage of the natural melting that's going on. Who knows what else they found? It kind of goes along with this theory of there, and it goes, to, it's China, because they have a very different take on prisoners than we do. They had a program where they allowed prisoners 14 or 16 hours a day to sit and play World of Warcraft. Now you think, wait a minute, why would they let them play games? Hold on. Inside World of Warcraft, there is a uh, their currency, what they what you use to buy stuff in game, actually has a real world value. And when DC and Saudi Arabia attacked Venezuela, World of Warcraft gold was actually worth more than the Bolivar. So they have these large rooms full of people doing nothing but quote-unquote mining gold, World of Warcraft gold, because it has a real-world cash value. And they would allow them to do this instead of sit in their cells. So the reason I say all of that is that they have this idea that we can give prisoners an option. Okay, you can either sit in your cell, or you can be productive for China, for the country. What better way than to send them down here on ships where they don't have to worry about walls, they don't have to worry about um, prison guards, because they're going to say, okay, here's your area that you can work in, and you're going to mine, and you're going to look around, and you're going to search for things. And if they die, oh, you know, oh well, they're just prisoners. And nobody's down there looking, nobody's down there policing this. And it's just like the Star Trek movie thing, the planet, the prison planet, Aurorapente. You can escape all you want, and unless you're some place where there's some type of infrastructure, you're going to die very fast. They could have thousands, tens of thousands, armies of people down here doing this. And this is kind of the, the allegation I think is going on. Whether it's just China or not, I don't know. But I found something else. Who remembers when I found this, what looks like Colossus? We talked about the Colossus of Rhodes. What I didn't see was this. This thing is sitting on the back. It's standing on the back of what looks like some type of a bird creature with a, the head of a turtle, something like this. And you can see the scales, you can see the feathers. You know, they referred to, the Chinese, the Asians, referred to turtles as mud dragons because of, you know, they would get covered with scales and with leeches and with moss and lichens and they would come out of nowhere. So I really do wonder, is this that? Is this a form of a dragon? And like I said, you're, it's just a theory. But if we're ever going to figure anything out about lost history, we're going to have to start thinking outside the box. 
who knows how wrong history could be? And I used the Houston thing as an example. It would have been very easy to believe that Houston was some capital city of, of the planet or of a continent. And it's not even the capital of Texas. It's just where Johnson Space Center was. So, this is what I wanted to show you today. Um, there are many other things that, let's see if I can, it's hard to find sometimes, but you have to look really close. This looks like some part of an ancient squid here. I'm not sure what's caught up in this crack. But whatever it is, it has tentacles. And it's definitely different than everything around it. And I'll zoom out here real quick to show how many different things. Some of these I've shown before, some I haven't. But there are all sorts of, there's all, all sorts of stuff. And this is just one tiny area right here where there's near the Kohler range, where there's just dozens and dozens of finds. And to zoom out to give you an idea of how big Antarctica is compared to that, look at this. That's like a fourth of the continent. And this is just one teeny tiny area right here where there are so many things to be found. And one thing, and I'll leave with this, Sometimes you find a structure that shows you the uh, orientation of what you need to be looking at. And this, in this region, this area that I have called canopy cover, shows that we can see a shadow right here. And we can see this over the top of it. So we can say, okay, for sure, this is our orientation. And then we look underneath... And it almost looks like there's something in the ice behind this. But whatever this is, it's constructed. This platform is just too, too even, too nice. So once we know this, what you can do is you look in the upper right. This is Google Earth Pro. And you can see where north is. So north is on our left, so we are facing east. So when you zoom out and you go to look at something else, make sure that you are oriented facing east. And when you do that, that's when everything starts to appear. We covered this before, this what I call demon wall image. I don't know how anyone can look at this and say, oh yeah, that's just wind, ice, rock, snow. That's what happens. That's just, you no, know, nothing else, no intelligence involved, no uh, other interference. Just the falling of snow and the blowing of wind. I mean, seriously, that's the, you know, I hate to get into the A-B thinking, but it's either you believe that, or on the other side, there is some answer that involves intelligence. Sometimes it's simple as shapes like this. But once you have your orientation set to know what you're looking at, then everything else starts to make sense. Well, I shouldn't say it makes sense because there's so many things down here that defy explanation that, uh, but it will give you at least a, a beginning of a look. And I guess, let's see here. Let's get our orientation right. Tell me that doesn't look like a flying disc. And once again, we see these shadows, these dark shadows that look like people everywhere. Who they are, what they're doing, what their mission is. Very difficult to ascertain at this point. But this is, here's a new find. I'm not sure exactly what this is, but once again, what do we see? 
You see an eye, an upper jaw, a lower jaw. So many times over and over again, we see this. And nearby, shadows, evidence of what looks like people. And look here, this looks like a person or something casting its own shadow right here. A shadow of a shadow. Some other creature right here. Tell me this is some natural creation. I would like to hear some explanation. I know we're 18 minutes in. Of this in the ice and snow. I mean, if you don't see the, the head here, the jaw, nose, eye, whatever they're attempting to construct here, whatever they're attempting to show here, I, I don't know what more to say. And once again, Google Earth Pro, you can download it for yourself. You can put it on your own device. You can go to these locations. Nothing I ever show you has ever been enhanced, has ever been doctored by me. And I would defy anyone to go back three, four, five, eight years and see anyone else who's tried to do this, to take the time to do this. There's something going on down here, and it's being kept from the vast majority of us, I guess I should say. Everyone is so caught up with what's going on in D.C. It becomes so incestuous. It's nauseating. It's one thing you've never heard on this channel. I know people aren't really happy with me because I'm not a giant supporter of the guy who's currently in the West Wing. But you ever heard me talk about Ukraine? Ever heard me talk about Russia? Ever heard me talk about any of that other bullshit that's going on? You don't. Because it's not important. It's not relevant for me to even express an opinion on it. And the less we talk about them, the less relevant we make them. And the more we talk about real relevant things like this, that's how we're going to win. And I'm just going through showing random images from this area to encourage people. Please, do this for yourself. Laptops aren't that expensive these days. And this is an easy program to download. And you can spend hours. It's kind of a time killer, really. You can look up and hours have passed. And I really enjoy it when people have descriptions of their own of things that I show. And they say, wait, you missed this at this moment in time. Go back and look. And almost 100% of the time, you guys are right. Because I'm kind of distracted talking and showing the things that I've seen that sometimes I get tunnel vision of my own. It's happened time and time and time and time again. I mean, what would cause all of this? And I know I'm running over 20 minutes here, but I think it's important. I really think it's important to show how much is out here. And this is just one small area of Antarctica. This looks like what I thought was some kind of a hydra. Let me see if I can actually move my uh, my own lettering out of the way here. I mean, what is this? How could you explain this? And it's it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating imagery. of things that just defy imagination. There's no no video game out there that I think is anywhere near as creative or has the ability to show things as uh, bizarre as Antarctica. 
So I guess I will let you guys go, let you guys get back to what you're doing. But anyway, thoughts, comments, like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time. would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable first 90 days no questions asked what's the difference between youtube and patreon at patreon we can take the gloves off there are no censors we have of course the patreon firewall and then we also have vimeo that we're partnering with and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely would love to have you over there there are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir?